talk about different forms of, of EMFs. Um, you have Wi-Fi, uh, cell phones. Uh, you mentioned cordless phones. Are they all the same in terms of, of frequencies that we get? Are some more dangerous than the other? Um, it turns out that these devices have use similar frequencies. They're all in the hundreds of megahertz or gigahertz range. So 800, 900 megahertz are common cell phone frequencies that the FCC has allotted mm -hmm. to, the, to that industry. Um, and then uh, each, each of the four carriers has their own. Uh, it'll be 827.39, 823.27. So, so if you go to antennasearch.com and put in your house, you'll see dozens, if not hundreds, of towers around. They're not all our cell towers. Many of them are low, low wattage towers. But, but you'll see, if you, if you hit upon the icon for a cell tower, you'll see 200 frequencies there. And your phone is constantly shifting from one to another. You don't even know this. As you're, as you're driving down the highway. Um, so that's, and then you have uh, uh, 1800, 1900 uh, megahertz, which is 1.8, 1.9 gigahertz. Then Wi Fi is 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz. These are all frequencies, like those frequencies are non regulated, meaning you don't need a license to buy a Wi Fi enabled router and then turn it on and plug it in and start transmitting. Even though it's going beyond your house, but it's not regulated. It's, it's an unregulated band. So uh, the harm does not come so much from the frequency, although that has something to do with it. The harm primarily comes from the density of, of the power density or the strength of the signal. But mostly it comes from how long you're exposed to this uh, signal uh, because these effects are cumulative. Now it turns out that there's a, a, a PhD by the name of George Carlo, who also went to Columbia, or taught at Columbia, who told us the story when he was our keynote speaker in 2008 of his experience with this. When he was at Columbia in the early 90s, he was called by his friend, who was the assistant secretary of HEW before it split into Health and Human Services and the Department of Education. And his friend said, George, this is in the early years of the Clinton administration, in the early 90s. His friend said, we have been contacted at the HEW by the cell phone trade industry to conduct collaborative research to prove that cell phones are safe. And we want you to run the study. And George said, I know where this is going. I don't want to be a part of it. Thanks, but no thanks. But he said a month later, his friend called him back and said, we're moving ahead with this, and we don't want anyone else to run it but you. Will you reconsider? So he did. And he funded this, or, uh, uh, headed the study. And he told us the story that people approached him and said, I understand you're doing this study on cell phones. Here's my CV. I want to be part of your team. And by the way, what outcome would you like? I can provide it for you. And he said, well, with that work ethic, or with that ethic, we're, we're not interested in having you on our team. So thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the research, or towards the end of the research, the story is that he said to them, we, to the executives, um, you can't say that cell phones are safe. Because our research showed that the cell membrane is affected by the low frequency information carrying radio waves. Because it turns out that when the military developed this technology in, in years past, uh, in the 50s, um, the 40s, uh, no, 60s, excuse me, they, in the 60s, the Defense Department developed this technology. And it was a way of communicating with the soldiers on the battlefield in such a way that it couldn't be um, intercepted like in the imitation game with Benedict Cumberbatch right. and, you know, in, the, in the 40s with, with shortwave and medium wave AM. So the problem was the frequencies that they were using, that they were transmitting on, uh, which I believe were um, 290 to 230 uh, hertz, 16 hertz, did not make it to the battlefield because you have low energy at that end of the spectrum. It's rich in information, like our brain waves, but mm -hmm. it's low energy. So they abandoned the technology, or were about to, until someone said, what if we piggyback these slow waves onto carrier waves that are in the microwave range, where radar, or close to radar, mm -hmm. which penetrate for miles, but can't carry information to the same degree. Mm -hmm. So they married the two. So George used the analogy of a clothesline with wet diapers on it, flapping in the breeze of a breezy day, windy day, at one frequency, but the whole clothesline is undulating up and down slowly be, uh, at another frequency because of the weight of the wet diapers. So the, the clothing, the diapers represent packets of information, but the whole clothesline is the carrier wave. Mm -hmm. The problem is the carrier wave has a threshold below which you can measure the presence of that frequency uh, or that power density for the carrier wave. 
but it's below what's called the specific absorption rate, or SAR, which is one kilowatt, uh, one watt of energy, excuse me, one watt of energy per kilogram of body mass. And this is the threshold that's there in, the, uh, in law, and so all the cell phone manufacturers say, well, we're below that, so there's no problem with our phones. Well, that's the thermal effect, that's the heating effect, and that's based mm -hmm. on a 200 pound dummy with gel in the head to represent a, a, a man, and a child has a much thinner skull sure. and is affected, but that's another story. But it turns out that the low frequency information carrying radio wave, which is down, again, as I said, in, in the 200 hertz range and, la and, and lower, has no, uh, has no threshold for safety in terms of the health effects. And the health effects are that it causes the membrane to shut down. It causes these pores in the membrane of the cell to lock down that are normally open in the parasympathetic mode. But when the cilia, these hair-like projections of the cell, perceive the presence of these low-frequency information carrying radio waves, then the cell membrane locks down and does not allow nutrients in or waste products out. That's what his research showed. And when that happens, and this happens with every cell phone call that you make, or any time you bring one of these devices close mm -hmm. to the body, in his research from 91 to about 97, um, it turns out that, that there's this cascade of events in the cytoplasm of the cell called the Froelich effect, which, which affects the, the messenger RNA, uh, the, um, the mitochondria, the DNA. There are heat shock proteins that occur there. Uh, there are micronuclei. These are all markers for cancer, uh, changes in the cell uh, membrane uh, or cell nucleus and also in the uh, cytoplasm that Dr. Martin Blank corroborated and many other researchers around the world have corroborated in the decades since, decades since. So when Dr. Uh, Carlo presented this to his corporate uh, benefactors, the, the, the companies that had supported the research, he said, my research is not going to prove your initial premise that cell phones are safe. And I recommend that you uh, put warning labels on cell phones, just like we have with cigarettes, mm -hmm. or change the technology. And they did neither, and the story is that he resigned. They, they, they had a falling out, and, and you know, basically that research never saw the light of day. It has been corroborated overseas, not here. Hmm. And uh, no one knows about this. And so, so the bottom line is that um, now we've gotten to a point where the research is undeniable, the, the, the links are there but they're not being acknowledged by the U.S. press or regulatory agencies or the cell phone industry because they have this, this whole package, this whole um, construct of, of what the truth is about these technologies that just disallow, does not allow any discussion of these other issues. But outside the United States, this is covered well. Uh, Europeans say, why do you people not know about this? <laughs> we know about it. Mm -hmm. Now, they still use these technologies, but at least, you know, that's the risk that they're taking, but they know what the risks are. But countries outside the United States are actively removing this technology where they can, from schools, mm -hmm. libraries, and hospitals, and, and encouraging people to, to, you know, just like we did 30 years ago with, with tobacco. Yeah. No. So we're in this time period, this bubble, if you will, this window of time during this grace period during which uh, the tumors are growing, the illness is increasing, uh, autism, there's a link to autism, a link to uh, infertility, uh, behavioral problems. A study shows that women who use cell phones, their, their offspring have uh, behavioral problems in their teen years, mm. uh, early onset Alzheimer's, leukemia, uh, tumors, uh, brain tumors, acoustic aromas, uh, parotid gland uh, tumors in, in Israel, uh, in one study. So, in summary, what we recommend is that people who are not symptomatic from uh, exposure to wireless frequencies and the EMS that they produce should really be proactive and look at this research from Europe. Uh, go to these websites. Uh, CreateHealthyHomes.com is my website. From there I have links to these other websites outside the United States. Uh, and do the research for yourself. I actually tell my clients if I've done my job right, by the end of the day, and it's a six hour consultation when I come to a home, you and your husband are going to have a serious conversation about this. And you're going to look into it and you're going to see what the Europeans and the people in Asia and, and India and Israel and Russia know about this uh, and make a decision for yourselves to be proactive and go back to hardwired connections and just 
just reduce your exposure to these technologies because of their cellular effects. And then you're going to thank yourselves five to 10 years from now for listening to that guy back in 2015 when your friends call you up and say, my son was just diagnosed with a brain tumor, you know, because it's happening. It's already happening. Mm -hmm. The clock is ticking. And so you don't want to be in the, you don't want to be that family. Mm -hmm. So you're not hearing this from the government. You're not hearing it from regulatory agencies. You're not hearing it from industry or academia. So do your own research and, and look at what others are doing.